Good morning, it's Saturday. I just woke up, it's 7, 12 a.m. Drew has already vacuumed and I have zit cream on. Good morning. So the reason I'm vlogging is because we're having our coffee and I was like, wait, I'm gonna grab my camera because I really wanna try. I haven't tried the brown sugar oat milk espresso drink from Starbucks and I don't even know if they have it anymore. I think now they just have a shaken espresso, which is a latte <laughs> that they shake. The thing we have yeah. So I'm sure there will be many of you that are telling me that I'm doing it wrong. I don't care. Um, this is the recipe that I saw. So you basically take brown sugar, the tiniest dash of vanilla, the tiniest dash of cinnamon, and then you mix it with ice and espresso and you shake it and then it makes it like foamy, I guess. I'm not super into foamy drinks, but we'll try it. So first, I guess I need my brown sugar. Well, thank you. Some of the recipes had you make a simple syrup and then some had you just put it in with the espresso. So I don't know, we'll freaking see. Got the cinnamon and oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. And got the vanilla. All right, so start with the brown sugar. I'm gonna do like a tablespoon. That's how much sugar I would prefer in my drink. I'm sure there are people that would like more, but one tablespoon. I don't sweeten my coffee, I just use oat milk, so we'll see. Okay, cinnamon. Do I put cinnamon in with the espresso? I don't know. I'm gonna do a dash. This feels very fall. I'm very confused as to why this was like a spring drink. And then some vanilla, just a little baby splash. So there's the mixture. I guess I should put in ice. You shake it with ice, but that, fits. I'm gonna melt the sugar first. I also was told one time when I made an espresso, like remember how we used to put the ice in our glass and then let the, what? I think it's my face wash from last night. Oh, probably. <laughs> we used to put ice in the glass and like let the espresso go over it and then someone told so me that that shock actually it. shocks the espresso, so I don't freaking know. make it bitter or something. Listen, people have very strong opinions about coffee. Okay, espresso time, here we go. Why is that the most satisfying sound ever? I'm gonna shake it first just without any ice in it because I just want it to melt the sugar. I think that's shaken up pretty good. It's a little foamy. I'm fine with that. I'm just scared to like shake hot liquid in glass for too long. <laughs> Might do one more shake. Okay, so then I guess you put the ice and then your oat milk. Should I shake it with the ice too? Yeah, it just smells like a fall drink. I feel like all that did was just melt the ice, so. Great, it is shaken though. And then I'll put some oat milk and we'll test this baby out. I don't know. We've been trying all different kinds of oat milk. This one isn't my favorite, but we like the barista blend. I mean, it's pretty. So there we have it. I'm gonna just mix it up a tiny bit more. Official taste test. Cheers. Whoa. Um, it's good actually. It just, it literally tastes like fall. I think you'll really like it. Do you mind if I show you first thing in the morning? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's cinnamon, so it just, it tastes like a, like a fall drink. I know. I drink it. Drew likes it. I'm just not a big flavored drink person. Like, I am not trying to hate on people who go to Starbucks, but when y'all go to Starbucks and it looks like a grocery list, like for your order, it's like two pumps of this, one pump of this, one pump of this, extra this, extra foam, extra caramel, and then people are like, screenshot this if you wanna <laughs> order it. I used to be obsessed with like Frappuccinos and all that, but it's just like, it's weird the older you get, for me anyways, like the more adverse I am to like super sweet things. Like I like, or I guess coffee drinks I should say. Like I used to, the thought of not putting so much cream and sugar in my coffee made me feel ill. But now like, this is a little sweet for me. It tastes like, like cinnamon toast crunch or something. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does actually. I don't taste any coffee. I do, a little bit, but it's okay. I, I would give it like an eight out of 10 because it's really good, but it's, I just don't know if it's like for me, but it is very Maybe tasty. I would recommend trying it if you like kind of like fall-esque drinks. That's like right up Drew's alley. He loves like nutmeg, cinnamon, he loves chai. So I feel like you'd like it. It's good, I'm gonna drink it, but it's like, I should have just made a latte. Okay, good morning. Signing off for me and my zip cream. Also for today's Chia Pet update, here is where we've come. We are sprouting. It just looks repulsive. I don't know why. It's really freaking me out. Especially this one on the back of her head. Like, hello? They look like little bugs. That's pretty 
pretty rank, but there we have it. There is the, the next Chia Pet update. Make sure to subscribe for more. It's a little while later. I am wearing the same thing, but I have since eaten breakfast, brushed my teeth, and washed off my zit cream, so progress. But I'm actually waiting in the car right now outside of the vet. We are doing a checkup with Moo and I decided to drive so that Drew can hold Moo in the carrier because Moo gets really anxious in the car and he just does better if there's like more than one person and it's just safer for the person driving to like be able to focus on driving and not have to check on him and stuff. So I decided to accompany them today. They're inside. I love that there are still vets here that are like not letting you gather and congregate indoors like they call you in. You're only allowed to bring one person. And yeah, there's nothing particularly wrong with Moo. It's just kind of like over the last probably year, he's had a little bit of stomach issues and I'm not gonna get into the details because whoa. But he's been on like a variation of different medications for his stomach issues like um, prednisone, all sorts of different stuff. And he had tried out a new medication over the last like month and it was a basically a, a chemo, like a version of a chemo um, because of the stuff that's going on with him. And so that's not really working. So we're trying to like find some other methods to hopefully help him feel good. The good thing is he's maintaining his weight. He's eating very a lot and he's behaving completely normally so it's really just when he goes to the bathroom i'll just leave it at that but yeah we're trying to figure out some solutions so that he is the happiest healthiest cat ever drew should honestly have like a frequent flyer card at this place like one of those punch cards because he comes here like every couple weeks <laughs> it's just part of it part of being a pet parent you know it's interesting that drew was like 19 i think when he got moo and i was 22 or 23 when i got layla so it's just funny how like you think oh i just want this cute little pet and it's gonna be so fun and and adorable and it is it is very much that, but also you don't realize that you're gonna be in your 30s and you're still gonna be shelling out like hundreds if not thousands of dollars at a time to make sure that your pet is well cared for. And it's like, I think a lot of people don't think about that when they look into getting pets and I'm not trying to discourage anyone from getting a pet. Like getting Layla and like inheriting Moo or whatever you wanna call it is the best thing that's ever happened to me. But it's just something that like I never really thought about until years and years and years later, it's just continued to happen. Like having pets is very expensive and I'm sure having Having kids is more expensive but anyways feeling so fortunate that we're like in a position where we're able to you know provide good care for our pets I know there's pet insurance and things like that but our pets are too old and have too many pre-existing conditions for that so anyways it is Saturday I think I mentioned that when I started filming um I don't know what we're gonna get up to today this is kind of like right in the middle of the day it's like 11 something right now that's the middle of the day for me now apparently because I, w I wake up at like quarter to six these days just like naturally i don't understand i don't know so to me it feels like the middle of the day but it's literally the morning it's just getting so warm here that it's like i would have loved to have maybe gone to the farmer's market walked to a coffee shop or something but we would have had to have done that like quite a bit earlier in the day so maybe we'll do that like another weekend um yeah i don't really know what we're gonna get up to but we'll see okay we got the fam back in the car and Moo's doing okay. He's just gonna like continue his medication, right? Basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, he's gonna. They did more watch. tests, but funnily enough, the exit that we get on to the freeway, like near the vet, was closed, and so we have to take a detour. And we're basically going through. It must be bulk trash day. We're going through our neighborhood of the very first house we lived in together when we moved in together four years ago almost three and a half years ago let's see how ernie's oranges are doing oh, ernie. ernie our old next door neighbor he hated, us. he hated us and he loved our roommate oh my gosh wait we have not been here since we've moved out so weird it's the same it's exactly the same i'm not stopping there's more like the yard is like better maintained a little bit there's our old bedroom I'm not gonna show it because I just don't, it's it's a friend of ours house and his mom lives there now, so we don't wanna like disturb them. Also, um, this was where that guy got murdered. Yeah, at the end of the street. Like right, it was like this house right here, I think, with the blue garage. Yeah, because the one on the Because the one, it was the one either across the street or it was one of these two. I thought it was. Was the drop house, remember? Or no, wait, 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 wait. I think this was where he lived. The neighborhood's not looking. 
was it always like this? Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, Nobody, nobody knows how a four-way stop goes. Then me, then you. Okay, buddy. It's funny how like we have four-way stops and no one knows how they work, but then like when we, we as like American, I mean, I don't, I can't speak for all Americans, but like a roundabout. Yeah, we don't know what to do. No. Every, every man for himself in the roundabout. No and it's just, it's you just so go. easy. You just flow with the traffic. It's when so people, easy. especially here, there's like a couple spots in like North Phoenix where you have to go through roundabouts or in like, I want to say maybe like Gilbert or something where you have to go through roundabouts and people here lose their minds Going in roundabouts. Going up to Sedona. Yeah, driving have, up north. You have, you have to go through roundabouts. And people do Sedona. not know what to do with themselves. It's so funny. It's like you literally just go. The reason why my mom will not drive up to Sedona is because of the roundabouts. She makes me drive. Yeah, when we went up there the last <laughs> time, I had a, that's one reason why I drove when we went up there with her. Because she was nervous. She doesn't like doing the roundabout. I'm like, it's really easy. That's so funny. You literally just go. You just flow. There's You're not just a flowing. car in your way. You just go. You stay in the lane that's that nearest to you. Freaking hilarious. Well, that was unexpected, but I was like, well, we're literally right next to it. We might as well just drive through it, and we did. If You've never driven past an old house before, you should try it. That was wild. We've come so far. We were different people when we lived there. Yeah. A lot of life has happened. A lot of meth. Just kidding. We never did meth. <laughs> no. A lot of meth happened in that neighborhood, though. Yeah, there was the. There was unfortunately, one time. there was there a guy was who. One time. What? Um, I was coming home okay. from work one time. I don't think you were living. You were living there. Were you living there yet? I don't remember. Anyways, I was coming home from work. And there was, there were always like vacant houses or just very run down houses in the neighborhood. There, no one lived there. And there was a vacant house, but there were people who, I don't know if they were squatting. They probably were. That happened a lot in our um, neighborhood. But they, one day, they were just sitting out in their truck. The next day, come driving back the same way. And they had filled the back of their truck with water. <laughs> yeah. They were doing like a pickup truck, like a pool. Yeah, a like pickup a, truck. Yeah. And they were just chilling, Having a blast. chilling in their pickup truck. There's just a lot more of a drug issue in this area as well. Like, you know, unfortunately that guy got murdered on our street for trying to basically intercept like a... Well, they intercept like a home invasion. House. Yeah, and there were on our street, there were like at least two or three abandoned houses and they had to cover them up with plexiglass like on all the windows because all the windows was, got shattered. That was mm -hmm. the house with the people. I know. People. Um, and there were just, there was always helicopters, gunshots, you'd hear about stabbings right by our house and like you never cared. I was always like freaking out whenever I would hear that stuff and you'd be like, our roommate would be like, did you hear about the murder last night? And you'd be like, no, I slept. <laughs> you just were like unfazed. But yeah, it's really cool to have visited there because also like it has a lot of meaning to both of us because like our friend lived there and if you followed us back then and watched our vlogs, like I'm not gonna like tell your story, but basically Drew lived there with one of his best friends. His best friend unfortunately passed away and then we chose to continue to live there. Yeah. I moved in. His family couldn't afford the His family couldn't afford the mortgage and so basically we lived there for another you lived there for like another almost two years after he died. And I moved in about eight months after we started dating and I never really fully addressed it. And because it's not a thing that it's not like a YouTube clicks thing. It's like mm -hmm. just a real life thing well, that happened. A lot happened. of people also thought that I mean people meaning people that watch your channel. I think they thought it was like there was drama with our roommates. Yes. People like I would I would say all. like oh we can't really move stuff around in the house because and people thought that it was because like we had drama with our roommates no, no, no not at all our roommates were amazing they, they were, were wonderful probably the people. best roommates I've ever had because yeah. we all kept to ourselves and <laughs> when you guys went through a really traumatic yeah. event together and so like that obviously like bonded you in a unique way so no it was like we didn't move the stuff in the house because none of the stuff was ours yeah. it was Drew's best friends and so we out of respect to his family they asked for us to not really move a lot of stuff and just kind of keep things the way they were and so yeah his mom ended up moving into that house after we moved out and it worked out really well and like everything is you know as good as it can be in a tragic situation like that but yeah that's real life um that's there's so many things that people don't talk about online that go on in their real life but yeah not the greatest neighborhood 
I would say, but it's really cool to go back and like that was our first place we ever lived in together, you know, and that was like sort of where, that's where like Layla and Moo became tolerant of each other. And first time Layla had a sleepover. Yeah, we had like so many memories there, so. <laughs> hey Moo, you checking it out? Well anyways, that's what's going on in this neck of the woods. Just decided to take a deep breath. Yeah, let's get some lunch for sure. We're in line to get our lunch and look at this guy. Look at him. Boo. He usually like he'll poke his head out and look Where and then you? he will like pop it back down after a second. But yeah, he's uh <laughs> it kills me. Okay, we're picking up lunch now.